Welcome back to Fire to Fork. Today we are doing three things that I think most people cook wrong. And I'll be completely honest, I've cooked these wrong for most of my life, so don't feel bad. Okay, before you get to see this, don't forget, comment the code word down below and you'll be in a chance to win, in the running, for a chance to win my book. I will draw, draw one of these every week and yeah, I'll, I'll reply to your comment and you, and you can email me and I'll send a book out for you. Signed. And I'll chuck a sticker and a patch in as well. Now, this is the Just Add Water edition, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna just add water to these three things, and uh, look, I'm gonna show you the difference. So I'm gonna go pot cooked with water, a pot cooked without water, um, and we're gonna put them all on a board, and I'm gonna taste them, and I'll describe to you the difference. Um, so here I've cut up some mushrooms and some onion. These two that are going first are gonna have water in them. Now, to start with, Neither of these have any natural oil, so I'm going to just chuck a little bit in. I usually like to use a bit of butter and oil combination, but a spreadable butter actually does that. So, a bit of spreadable butter. Uh, and there is a third thing, which I'll show you once we've done these. Now, I'm going to grab about a cup of cold water. Yes, these are a cup measurement. And that's it. Drop them in. And as you can see, it's on a cold pan. I'm gonna go, and go, gonna go and put them on the heat and see what happens. Okay, so you can see it's been about probably 15 to 20 minutes. Um, the onion is coming down nicely. The mushroom's doing really well, actually. A Little bit more heat on the mushroom, so it cooked a little bit quicker. And that's looking great, it's really juicy. You basically wanna cook that till there's no water there's no liquid left. And same sort of deal with these, till they're just browned and caramelised. Okay, these mushrooms are looking pretty good. There's a little bit of oil in there, but yeah, they're, they're done. Nice and brown and juicy. Take them off. Let's have a quick look at these onions. They're looking good. They definitely got a bit to go to brown up. All right, this is looking pretty good. Yeah, that's done enough for me. It's not fully caramelized onions, but they are perfect for exactly what I'm actually gonna do with these, which is put them in a steak sandwich. Now to make this fair, I'm actually gonna let both of these cool down. So we'll get, I've cleaned this board. Get our onion on there. Mushroom on here. And we're gonna go same again, same pans, so that it's even. Another knob of butter. And same again, on the heat. Whoa. Oops. Stand fell over fix that. Leave them for about, well, till they're cooked. Keep them stirring. Okay, these have only been on for about 10 minutes, but they're already nearly cooked. This probably only has about three or four minutes to go. For reference, the others took about half an hour. And I reckon these are probably gonna take, yeah, 15 minutes at most. So roughly doubling the cook time, which is sort of the point. All right, it's been probably 12 minutes all up and these mushies are all good. See? Cooked. Okay, now in the interests of getting this all done as soon as possible, what I'm gonna do is just pour these mushies out and get the next thing in. So, the next thing, many of you will have guessed, cup of water with bacon. Got some nice streaky bacon, because I like streaky bacon. It's very thin, this one, but it's very good. British Sausage Company doesn't make many good things. I don't like, I don't actually like their sausages very much, funnily enough, but I do like their bacon. So that is just water-wise, I'm gonna show you on the other camera quickly. It's just over the top of the bacon, just covering it, and that's all you need. Let's check on this onion, like a minute more on that, I reckon. Actually, I reckon that's done. That looks good to me. As I said, I want these to get to room temp. And I'm actually gonna cool this pan off. 
because you should always start baking in a cold pan. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. But I'm not gonna put it on yet, I'm just gonna wash it out. And then, because that other bacon's gonna take about twice as long. So I'll wait till that bacon's sort of 10 minutes in and then I'll, then I'll put the other bacon in and let this cool down because that's still, well, that's pretty cool actually. Handle's just warm still. It's been about 10 minutes. You can see that most of the water has evaporated and the, the fat has started to render off really nicely. So um, I'm gonna put, put the other bacon on now. This other bacon, I've just put a little bit of butter on the bottom of the pan, cold pan, chuck it on. All right, it's been about five minutes. Time to give these a quick flip. And try this one as well, see if it's ready for a flip. That looks gross. It always does just before it's done. It's just all like just rendered fat and grey and looks poached. It's disgusting looking. But I've tried it before. It doesn't end up disgusting tasting. Alright, we've got about five more minutes before that's done. So Let's do it. Let's try it. First up, onion. See if it's worth it. Buttery. Cooked perfectly. Perfect for a sandwich. You know what? It's a... It's 5 to 10% better. If you have the time, do it with water. Because it does have a little bit more... A little bit more moisture. It's just, it's a little bit sweeter. Um, but the main advantage here, I think, is actually more about heat control than the water. Because this is just rendered down really nicely and caramelised really nicely because it cooks slower. Because the water, you can't get water above 100 degrees. So this is sat at 100 degrees for a really long time. And that's sort of where it gets its, yeah, its punch. So by the way, this is the um, water one and this is the non-water one. Now in this case, this is the non-water one, and this is the water one. So, let's try the non-water one. Very nice mushroom. Mmm. Juicy. Nice. Mmm. Mmm. Interesting. This is a lot more juicy. This is a lot... It has a much nicer feel to it. It... It's kind of firmer in a good way. So like it has just more, more bite to it, but it still has that nice amount of, it's still just as cooked, still just as caramelized, but there's more juice in it. Whereas this feels a little bit, oh, mm. That's a lot drier than this. Mmm, wow. I've done this before but I've never put the two next to each other. That is dramatically better. Cook mushrooms with water. Absolutely. No question. All right, have a look at this bacon. Okay, just flip this one, because I needed to, and that one is done. So I'm just gonna pull that off the heat. That took a fraction of the time of the water one. That took, yeah, a good, oh, I mean, that's gonna be all up 20 minutes, and this was probably eight. Okay, flip all these. Now the water is all gone. I might need a little bit of oil in there, actually. That bacon's just not as fatty as some, um, which is not, you know, tastes good, but it's usually streaky bacon has heaps of fat, and this one doesn't. This is looking pretty crispy, pretty done. Maybe like one more minute, so that it's all just as crispy as the other one. This is actually perfect for me, but um, I want to make it the same as the other bit of bacon. And we're done. So that's about 20 minutes, about eight minutes. This is obviously the, um, the normally cooked one. It's a nice bit of bacon. Um, it's still warm, by the way, just so it's a fair test. This is gonna be obviously hotter because it just took so long. Let's try this. I'm gonna get a similar bit, similarly crispy bit. That's a lot more tender. This has a lot more moisture, and it's just simply because it was cooked slower. If you could, if you could cook bacon 
just really, really slowly, it would do the same thing, but the water does that for you. That's what the water does. I mean, so of all of these, the one that it really, really impacted the most with liquid was the mushrooms. But the other two, it's really about cooking it slower. And that might sound weird, but um, on a fire, you don't always have that much heat control. This does the heat control part of it for you. The fact that these were cooked for longer is what makes them delicious. Um, so if you are amazing at heat control, you can probably get that same result. If you want a cheat code, use water. So now, I know the answer to this, but does it go well with beer? It's bacon, of course it does. Of course it does. All right, I'm gonna chuck this in a steak sandwich and have, have myself some lunch. There's a lot here. I got a few steak sandwiches worth. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to comment the code word down below. Cheers.